My name is Don Morgan. I'm a licensed radio amateur. My station is AB3BO. Over the last few weeks, I've taken Linux, the operating system, and I've installed it onto a compact Presario desktop computer. I've also added Ham Radio Deluxe, the free version, and JT65HF to the same computer box. If you're interested in doing the same install yourself, stick around and watch the presentation. So here's the situation. I've already been running a system with the Linux install and it's been working properly. And what we're going to do with this video is provide some information on the download of Linux through the install. And where we hope to end up with is a PC that has Linux as the operating system, Ham Radio Deluxe, and JT65. One disclaimer that I want to make sure that we understand up front. When Ham Radio Deluxe is installed here, the logbook function will not work. Also, I've done no testing or no work with the rotary function. Ham Radio Deluxe will be able to control the radio, receive and send. This is the computer box that we're going to do the install on. It's a compact Presario PC. This PC has an Intel Celeron CPU and it has two gigabytes of RAM. The Linux ISO that we're going to use in this presentation was found at this website that's indicated in the graphics here. If you do a search for Lubuntu 16.04 daily build, this page should come up as one of the options in Google. You can see we use the desktop i386 ISO. It's a 32-bit version. And you can see how the uh, uh, ISO looked when it was downloaded onto the local PC. There is a Lubuntu 16.04 alpha build. As a matter of fact, that's what I loaded up onto my system at first. And that's what I'm actually using. However, I uh, like the daily build uh, better for installation because it seems to be a much more refined install. This is the DVD that's been burned using the ISO that we downloaded. This has the daily build of Lubuntu 16.04 on it. This is the hard drive that we're going to be using for our installation. It's just going to be hanging inside the box to the connectors. It will not be permanently mounted inside the box. So again, we're going to use that DVD that we burned as the source for our installation. We're going to install it on a 40 gig Barracuda drive that's going to be hanging inside the PC. And for safety purposes, I disconnected all the other permanent drives that are inside the PC. Our next step for this installation is to make sure that the CD-ROM is the first boot device in the system setup for the PC. So here from the image you can see that the first boot device will be the CD-ROM drive, our install disk. Once the DVD is in the CD-ROM drive and the system starts booting up, one of the first things that the system asks for in the install process is the language that you're going to be operating in. And for this process, we're going to be using English. With this screen, we're going to make sure that we select the Install Lubuntu option. Once you select the, the Install option, the system is going to go off and give you a light blue screen with the Lubuntu label on it, and then it may even shift to a black screen with Lubuntu on it. And then it will finally get to another language screen here. We're going to select English and continue. For this screen, preparing to install Lubuntu, we're going to select Download Updates while installing, and we're also going to select the third-party software and click on Continue. I found that it works out pretty well if you do this install of the updates and the third-party software ahead of time. For this install process, we have that 40 gig hard drive that we placed inside the PC box. The only thing that's going to be on that hard drive is going to be this install of Lubuntu. 
There are no other operating systems on there. So what we're going to do here for the install is we're going to erase the disk completely and install Ubuntu. And that's the option that we're going to select in this screen here. We're going to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. This screen provides some information on how the disk drive is going to be partitioned for the install of Ubuntu. It also gives you the opportunity to back out one more time before writing to disk. One of the next steps in the install process is to provide the system with information on your time zone. For the keyboard layout, we're going to specify English US and then hit continue. This screen is the opportunity to enter your name, enter the host name of the computer that you're going to use. It also allows you to enter the username. It also allows you to enter in the password that you're going to be using on the system. And for this sake, we're going to keep the password short. We're also going to have the computer log in automatically. Now the system is going to spend some time copying files from the CD to the hard drive for the Linux installation. The install process has now reached the point where all the information needed from the CD-ROM is copied onto the hard drive. So at this point, we're going to remove the CD or DVD from the CD-ROM drive and click on Restart Now. Once the system reboots for the very first time, we are going to go into the software updater. First, the software updater is going to check and see if there are any updates. Then it's going to give you the opportunity to install the updates. So you click on Install Now. Then it's going to ask for authentication. So at that point, we're going to need to put in our password that we entered earlier on in the install process. The system is then going to do the install of the updates, and this will take a few minutes. Once Software Updater completes, we're going to restart now. So here's where we're at. We've installed a PC with Linux, Lubuntu. We've updated Linux and we've rebooted the system. And now the system is waiting for applications to be installed. So the first three applications that we're going to install are Wine 1.8, Ham Radio Deluxe, and JT65HF. One of the things about Wine 1.8 is to understand that Wine gets updated frequently. So if you're doing this install after a week or two, it may very well be Wine 1.9 or 2.0 or 2.x that you would be installing onto a PC. So just note that Wine gets updated on a frequent basis. Here, we're going to open up the web browser. We're going to do a search for Wine 1.8 Lubuntu. We're going to click on this very first link, how to install Wine 1.8 stable. Once we get to our page, we're going to scroll down and we're looking for three lines of code. One says add PPA via command and the next two are going to be under under update package cache and install wine 1.8. For the first line of code that's in our web page, we're going to highlight that line. We're going to right click and copy that line of information into the clipboard. Then we're going to press the Control key, the Alt key, and the T key at the same time. This action is going to open up a terminal window. Then we're going to right-click the mouse on the first line of that terminal window and paste that line of code that we copied into the clipboard. We're going to paste that code into the terminal session and hit the Enter key. The next steps are going to be to follow through on each one of the questions that might be asked during the processing of that line of code. Once that first line of code has been completely processed, we're going to do the same thing for the next two lines of code. We do not need to close the terminal session. We can keep the terminal session open, grab the next line by copying it into the clipboard, and pasting it into the terminal session line, processing it, and then repeat one more time for the third line of code in that web page. With those three lines processed in the terminal window, we're going to type in sudo reboot, and that's going to cause the computer to reboot. In the process of rebooting, 
any menu items that relate to the wine application will be added to the Lubuntu menu system. Now that we've installed wine on the system, the system has rebooted. Let's take a look at the menus and we can see here that wine is definitely on the listing of applications that are available. Now that we have the wine application installed on this Linux box, we can now load a couple Windows based programs onto this box. One of them is going to be Ham Radio Deluxe and the other one we'll load is JT65HF. So let's get to it. Open up a browser window and bring up Google and do a search on Ham Radio Deluxe Free. We're going to click on this very first link called Ham Radio Deluxe 5.24 Download. With the web page up in the browser, scroll down and click on HRD version 5.24.38. Save the file. Now we can use either the file manager or the open containing folder feature of the browser to navigate to the downloads folder. We are going to right click on the setup HRD file and we're going to use Wine Windows Program Loader to install Ham Radio Deluxe. In the process of installing Ham Radio Deluxe, there are going to be several programs that are going to need to be installed. We're going to follow those prompts and install each one of those options. Toward the final end of installing Ham Radio Deluxe, the system is going to give us the option of whether we would like to start Ham Radio Deluxe. We're going to make sure that that box is unchecked and then we're going to finish the install of Ham Radio Deluxe. Use the bottom right icon on the Ubuntu screen and reboot the system. Once the system has returned from reboot, we can take a look at the menu system and see that Ham Radio Deluxe has been added. There's already some information out on the web on the Ham Radio Station that this Ham Radio Deluxe install will be operating. You can take a look at this website, ab3bo.com, to see more information on the Ham Radio Station. This is the TS480 HX display along with the power supplies that are running this AB3BO amateur radio station. Several items have changed since the posting of that Kenwood TS480 HX web page. One, the PC has changed. Two, the USB to RS232 interface has changed. I used to use the Gigabit interface. Now I've changed over to the QVS interface. The sound card is slightly different. It's a still a USB sound card, but it's different from what was used in when the web page was published. Some notes before we continue. Ham Radio Deluxe will control the radio via the serial port. The RS-232 to USB cable, QVS cable that we have, is what forms the connection between the radio and the computer. Ham Radio Deluxe is a Windows program, so keep in mind that it uses COM ports. It recognizes COM ports. Linux recognizes the ports as TTY ports. Our next step on the install is going to be to establish a relationship between the COM port and the TTY port. We're also going to free up permissions for that TTY port so that Ham Radio Deluxe can make use of that port and control the radio. To start establishing permissions for the communications port, we're going to bring up the user settings by clicking on Users and Groups. When we initially set up the username on this system, we used the name Don. So what we want to do with the user settings is to make sure that Don is set up for the dial-out group. We're now going to do a search in Google with our browser. We're going to look for COM port to serial port in Linux. And we're going to click on that link there, how to check and use serial ports. Once the web page comes up, we're going to scroll down to this D message line in the code. It says simple run D message command. We're going to highlight that D message piece and copy it into the buffer, the clipboard. Then we're going to do a control alt and T and bring up the terminal screen. We're going to paste our buffer, our clipboard, into the first line on the terminal screen. And we're going to hit enter. We are interested in this information that is indicated in the green circle there. That is telling us that TTY 
uppercase USB zero is the serial port that it's being used with the cable that connects between the computer and the radio. We want to remember that TTY USB zero and it's case sensitive. We are going to search in Linux for this phrase wine Linux com port. When we do the search, the second link here is Wine and COM ports Ubuntu forums, and we're going to click on that and bring up the web page. Then we're going to scroll down until we get this to this line of code. We're going to take this line of code and we're going to paste it into a terminal session and execute this line. This line of code will allow us to link in Linux the COM1 designation for Ham Radio Deluxe and a TTY USB 0 serial port. Let's give Ham Radio Deluxe a try. We're going to set the connection settings for Kenwood, for the TS-480, and for the COM1 port. And let's connect. Our first attempt here to do a connection to the radio from Ham Radio Deluxe has yielded a access denied error. This means we're going to have to go in and adjust the serial port, the TTY USB 0 port, for correct permissions. So let's take a look at how to do that. In order to fix this error, we need to open up a terminal window and type in this command, sudo, that's S-U-D-O space change mod or C-H-M-O-D space 666 space forward slash D-E-V forward slash T-T-Y uppercase U-S-B zero. This will allow the ham radio deluxe to make use of the T-T-Y port and communicate with the radio. Now that we've done the change mod command, let's see if we can make the connection. It looks like we do have a connection. The frequency from the radio is registered on the screen. We're going to bring up Digital Master and see if we can get that going. Here's the screen with Digital Master 780 working and PSK31 working on the screen. We're working on 20 meters here. Now I don't have the macros and the tags and that sort of stuff set up, but you can at least see here that we've got Digital Master 780 on our box and it's been receiving properly. Now we've closed out all our Ham Radio Deluxe and Digital Master applications. We're going to do a search in Google and we're going to look for JT65-HF download. We're going to click on that very first link. When the page comes up, Let's click on the JT65 version link and save that file. Our next step is either to use the web browser or the file manager to navigate to the downloads folder. What we want to do is right click on the setup for JT65 and then do a Wine Windows Program Loader. This is to install the application. We want to follow all the prompts that are required in the setup of JT65HF we're going to follow those prompts all the way through to the finish. Once we finish the JT65HF install, we're going to reboot the computer. So now that we've rebooted the computer, we're going to start Ham Radio Deluxe. Now we have Ham Radio Deluxe up and running on 20 meters. We're going to start JT65HF. On the setup for JT65HF, we're going to enter in our call sign, our grid location, and we're going to set up the sound input and the sound output device. Next thing we're going to do is set up the rig control on JT65. We're going to tell JT65 that we're using Ham Radio Deluxe version 5. So here we are. JT65 has been running for a few minutes and we have some received stations. At the same time, we're also sending these received stations off to PSK Reporter. So here's the situation. We've been able to get Linux installed on a PC box. We've been able to install Ham Radio Deluxe. We've been able to control the radio with that Ham Radio Deluxe. And we've also been able to install JT65HF. Here are several slides showing the resources, the links that we used in the presentation above. There is also a PowerPoint presentation over at ab3bo.com, which contains the slides that were used above.
These are some additional applications that I use in my Linux setup with my amateur radio station. One of the applications I use is called Pulse Audio. In the Lubuntu Alpha build that I use on my system, I had a difficulty finding the sound device in Ham Radio Deluxe and in JT65. What I ended up having to do was add this Pulse Audio application to the system. And then what happens is the sound devices on Ham Radio Deluxe and on JT65 refer to the Pulse Audio. And then Pulse Audio maps the Pulse Audio to the actual sound card, which in this case is my USB card uh, sound port. The Pavel control that you see as the second item on the listing there is like a GUI interface for Pulse Audio. One other place where Pulse Audio may come in handy is in the use of Skype. So if you decide to use Skype and you have some difficulties in mapping audio devices, try Pulse Audio along with the GUI control. Two other applications that I use on a regular basis in my amateur radio Linux setup are Skype for Linux and Team Viewer. I make use of Team Viewer in my shack quite a bit for remotely operating one PC to another. This concludes our presentation. If you have any comments, any additional information or advice that you can provide, please supply them in the comments below. You can also check us out at ab3bo.com.